some more recent events. Um, and that's the Milwaukee Bucks winning the NBA Finals, drop or stop the 50 year drought um, when they had Oscar and Kareem well before our lifetimes. Um, they've had some good years in between when, you know, Michael Red was really good a little bit there. They had the Brandon Jennings days when he was on the team and they were pretty Monta exciting. Monta Ellis. Monta Ellis, yes, of course. Um, but yeah, they really got turned around by Giannis. But Vish, what were your thoughts on this overall run? And um, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought it was really cool for them to actually go and uh, make and win the championship. Honestly, full disclosure, I was one of those guys who didn't believe in them. I didn't believe specifically in specific things in Giannis's game. He proved me wrong. I didn't believe in Coach Bud. I don't think he proved me wrong, but he won a championship, so I can't say anything wrong about the man. I didn't believe in the style of basketball the Milwaukee Bucks played, especially with how reliant they were on shooting a lot of inefficient threes. But again, they managed to pull it off. So I was wrong on all all, all accounts because they did manage to win the ring. Um, I do think they were aided a little bit by Kyrie Irving's injury and mm-hmm. James Harden's injury and Kevin Durant's foot being six inches, you know, <laughs> in front of the, on the three point line. But honestly, I don't think those things matter. Like, sure, you can be aided by it. Well, they still had to go beat the Hawks in six and then ultimately beat the Suns in six. And they did it. Giannis had one of the greatest finals ever. I, I don't think it's being internalized, honestly, how great his finals is. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be one of those things, and we do this in the NBA a lot, where we're going to look at this box score of Giannis's finals four years from now and go, wow, that's the greatest finals ever. Like, how are we not talking about it then? But for whatever reason, it's not being perceived like that. So I, I don't know why. It is really one of the greatest final performances ever, especially for him, the way he played game one and game two when it looked like his knee was still bothering him for him to score 40 something in game two. And really all he needed was one of Chris Middleton or Drew Holiday to have a fairly decent game and they win game two in Phoenix. Then game three and game four for him to once again play great. But game four, you know, Chris Middleton was absolutely incredible. Game five, they all played well. Giannis was once again terrific. And then, like I said before, the greatest closeout game performance I've ever seen from any player. Giannis was in the finals. Giannis last night, it was special. What he achieved was incredible. The Milwaukee Bucks defense, I think, hasn't been talked about enough. It's not just Giannis with those amazing blocks and his health defense and his effort. It's Drew Holiday at the point of attack. I'm not a big fan of this guy. I think he gets away with a lot of fouls. I think he fouls way too much. But I thought he he was one maybe the most underrated player throughout their finals run, and that was P.J. Tucker. One of the biggest problems Milwaukee's had the last couple of years is they've been unable to guard very good wings. They struggled to guard Jimmy Butler in the bubble. They struggled with Kawhi Leonard two years ago. And P.J. Tucker, to me, helped that. I think he... Mm -hmm. troubled Kevin Durant at the very least, even though Kevin Durant was still dropping 48 on his head because he's Kevin Durant. So I think that he was actually very helpful. Pat Connaughton's offensive rebounding, like somehow that guy always had like nine rebounds with five of them being offensive. Yeah. So honestly, like, I don't know what else to say except for the fact that like props to the Bucks, Milwaukee deserves it. And Giannis deserves it. And I, I honestly was wrong about the Bucks and Giannis. Yeah. Yeah. Full disclosure. I was with you. I didn't think they would do it. Um, I, I honestly thought like against the Nets, I didn't think they could pull it out. I mean, Harden went down and Kyrie went down and that hurt him a lot, but still going to seven games and doing what they did in overtime, Kevin Durant didn't play particularly great in that segment. I think that's due to, obvious fatigue and their defense just kind of stepping it up a notch. And then um, I think this finals, they kind of proved how resilient they were because we forget the narrative when they, when the Suns were up 2-0, like everyone was calling this over and not many were giving the Bucks a chance to win. Um, but they rattled off four in a row. And I know you mentioned coach Bud and whether he deserved credit. It's crazy because if they lose to the Nets, he's gone. It's that simple. I thought the last two series, he made great, great adjustments. Um, Just overall, I mean, being down 2-0 in the finals, 
you can't just keep, you know, doing the same thing. I, I think changes were made and how they how they played defense was definitely one of them. And having Drew picking up CP3 full court and, you know, kind of wearing him down was a was a huge thing with that. Yeah. With what he did. And I I do agree with you. I don't know how good Coach Bud is. I think they had the superior team. I'll say that. They did what they had to do because we can say all we want about the Suns and how great of a season they had, but I, I I solemnly think that the Bucks big three is is definitely like undeniably better than the Suns big three. You know, Giannis is clearly I agree. the best bunch. Um, you know, Booker might be the next guy, the next best player. I, but I don't know if Booker is better than Chris Middleton. I, I'm going to be totally honest. I really? think for, uh, I I I take the superior three point shooter. Like Devin Booker to me. Uh, like a lot of people compare Devin Booker to Kobe. I'm just going to say right now, Devin Booker is not a three level scorer. He's not as good as Kobe or other three level scorers at the rim. He's not as good as in an in game. I mean, he's won three point contests. He's not as good an in game three point shooter either. He's a two point jump shooter. I, I think the best comparison for him is if DeMar DeRozan and, uh, Paul Pierce had a baby and then you souped mm-hmm. him up with a little more athleticism and a lift on his jump shot, you have Devin Booker. I don't know, but I, I, I had to just say that. My bad. I- no, you're good. I mean, I don't know. I haven't even thought about I would probably take Booker because I th- I think Booker's just a better score overall. And if Booker wasn't the best player on his team, what would he be? That'd be insane True. to think about. Um, but yeah, like the long-winded thing is I still think the Bucks big three is better. And I, I think this, you know, they had to win this, right? Mm-hmm. I think in every single series, they had the superior team, specifically considering the Nets were injured. Now, I hate saying that, but it is a caveat because this Nets team took them to seven. And that was largely with just Kevin Durant, just one guy for most of it. Uh, so that's right. crazy to think about. And I think that puts into perspective how good they are. Because you talk about not having Kyrie. Harden played, that was not Harden. That was a one-legged hobbled Harden. And the fact that, that they took them to seven to the very end says a lot to me about how good that Nets team really was. If the Bucks can rattle off four in a row against the Suns, they I think they should beat the Hawks. Um, they, they're just further along in the process. Um, but, I, but I am happy for them because I will say this, myself, you, and a lot of others did doubt this team, we doubted Chris Middleton. We doubted Giannis, doubted Drew Holiday, doubted Bud, and they did enough to win. Um, and I think your point about Giannis is right. Two 40-point games, a 50-point game, and a closeout. I know some people on sports media, like Nick Wright or others, have claimed like how great this is and Giannis is the best player and all that. But I feel like if this was Kevin Durant or LeBron who put up the same exact stat line, we'd be talking about it differently, or most people would be talking about it differently. Because there have been some people that have said how great it's been. Yeah. But I feel like for the most part, it's not being talked about. Like, if you put another maybe more familiar face that's done that's been on these high-pressure stages, like in the championship and whatnot, people would care about it more. I, I, I truly believe that. Absolutely. And you mentioned Kevin Durant. The reason I'm not ready to go with best player in the NBA to with Giannis is because of that head-to-head series. And to me, Kevin Durant looked the best player in that series. Far. And that's where I say, well, like, I don't want to, like, obviously Milwaukee showed incredible resilience. They were down 2-0 against the Nets. And that game three was a grind-out ball game that they won. They were, mm-hmm. they did have a 2-2 series versus the Hawks, and they did blow game one at home, and Ice Trey gave them 48, and they did come back from that. And then same thing with the NBA Finals. They were down 2-0, and they came back. They went four straight in terms of uh, winning the Finals. Like, all of that is really impressive. There should be nothing taken away from what the Bucks did, but at the same time, there is a little bit part of me that just wants to imagine what it would have been like if Kyrie Irving never gets hurt. Just because, mm-hmm. again, like it's so easy, especially you look at how historic Giannis's um, finals was, how great he was on both ends of the court. And you're like, yeah, this was one of the most special performances ever. He's automatically the best player in the NBA. But then how easily we forget what Kevin Durant was exactly. doing. And Kevin Durant was really giving people buckets. And I would say that, honestly, 
the Suns did a poor job. If you want to talk about the Suns defending Giannis, I think putting DeAndre Ayton on him in isolation and letting him gain a head of steam, like that's not the wall. They never, ever collapsed on Giannis in the paint. DeAndre Ayton had a very poor series. I think that I was one of those people who overrated him a little bit um, when he was really dominating Ivica Zubac and Andre Drummond. He had a very good series against Nikola Jokic, but Nikola Jokic was also overmatched in terms of his team against the Suns. Um, I overrated him a little bit. He's still a really talented player and yes. a very good one. But I think that when you're talking about the contract that that DeAndre Ayton might garner this offseason, I don't think it should be in the max conversation. You've been very vocal to me on just our phone calls over these playoffs that he isn't deserving of that. I agree. I thought he played – I don't want to use the word soft, but I thought he played timid in the finals. I thought – I mean, he's a seven foot one, 260-pound guy, and I thought he was shying away from the contact that Giannis – and Brook Lopez were providing not just Giannis giving him buckets. Like Giannis is going to eventually give everybody yeah, buckets. You exactly. can make it tougher on him, which the Suns didn't do a good job of. But he's going to give you buckets. It's on defense. Like he's got a four foot bunny right in front of the rim when Devin Booker's throwing it to him, and he's fading away and not going into Giannis's body and into Brook Lopez's body. So I thought that was a problem, and I thought the way they defended Giannis. And then real quick before you go, my bad. I just wanted to touch on Devin Booker again, real quick. Like, I mean, no means to discredit his finals. The two 40-point games back-to-back, I thought he had a great finals. I just think that there's a couple flaws in his game. And when people in the media and on Twitter start evoking the name Kobe, I I think that's where I I, I get a little bit like, yeah, Devin Booker's a hell of a player. He's a top 20 player in the NBA. He's one of the – he's an excellent player. He's an unbelievable – like, I love his – the way he talks and everything. Like, he's a guy you want to cheer for. It's amazing what he's been through with the Suns and the fact that they've been so anemic around him for so long. And so, um, honestly, uh, I I, I did want to say, like, he was still good in the finals and everything, but I I think there is that – missing in terms of him being elite at finishing at the rim and him being a truly lethal three-point shooter. I think he's really just a mid two-point jump shooter right now. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm, I'm with you. Like I think the Kobe comparisons were very rich and I think that happened all throughout the playoffs. Someone, I think it was Stephen A. Just honestly, just him. (laughs) He said Donovan Mitchell is the best jazz player ever, which is just a slap in the face to Carl Malone, who's won Rick, who's won MVPs, or at least a MVP. I want to say two. Um and, and Stockton. He, yeah, and Stockton. Like I I agree he'll he'll definitely be better than Stockton. Um, because I didn't realize this, but Stockton's like most points ever was like 30 something, like 34, 30. I know it's a different era. He's a different player, more of an assist guy, more of a steals guy. I, I get that, and I, I'm not saying Mitchell's better than him now because he's obviously not, but saying he's the best jazz player ever is insane. That's just like a slap in the face to Malone, and then saying Booker's the next Kobe on his first run where, yeah, he was he was playing great, but, I mean, it's Kobe Bryant. Come on, that's it, – It's, you know, it's really the fact that he has similarities to Kobe and Jordan in yeah. terms of the mid-range game. And he gets more lift on his jump shot than the average person. And they got up pretty high on their jump shot. But then I feel like people forget what young DeMar DeRozan was. Young DeMar DeRozan had a pretty similar game. I mean, he still has it now. He just creates more space with his body than his athleticism now. But young DeMar DeRozan did have a game that you could say was uh, uh, mimicked after Kobe Bryant, too. Yeah, it's just, I think that part of it, like, People get mad, like, and it. I think it starts leading to people to dislike Booker because they're like, "Oh, is this guy? This guy's supposed to be the next Kobe?" And it's completely mm-hmm. unfair. It's like nothing he did wrong or anything. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I just think those those things are kind of detrimental to a player's development. But yeah, I'm with you on that. But I, I thought Booker played a good Finals overall. Me like, too. Me you too. You really can't ask. There was a couple of games that weren't good, but like, well, you can't expect him to just ball out every single night and he had two 40 40 burgers mm-hmm. in his first game at, or his first uh finals ever um and i thought he was the best player on the court for the suns this series like i think he, was, far. he was the mvp i know cp3 was there i well, I, I still think booker was the guy this is what cool. 
Yeah. Did, did you did you not know that CP3's leadership is what guided Booker to have <laughs> those two 40-point games? CP3's yeah. leadership is like one of those uh, mythical things now. If CP3's leadership touches you, you will also become – the next great player. No, I'm I'm literally speaking tongue in cheek, but I'm with you. Booker was by far the Suns' best player in this finals. Agreed. Um, and then yeah, I I think the Nets or not the Nets, the Suns overall put up a good fight. I, I am a, a little bit disappointed they dropped four in a row though, because like you think there'd be some resilience, but they didn't really face much on their path here. You know. A lot of people talk about the injured teams, and there is some truth to that. Now, they did go six with the Clippers, but it was still without Kawhi, and I think most people expected them to win that when when you knew Kawhi was donezo. Um, so I, I think that was something that me and you were kind of waiting for. Like, what is this key team going to do to adversity when they do get punched in the mouth, and how are they going to respond? And, well, they didn't respond all that great, it looks like. Um so, yeah, I, I still think the Suns will be strong in the West for a few more years, but they have some interesting contracts ahead. That yes. is something I will say. They, What they do with these contracts will be very interesting. I agree. I agree. And I know we'll probably save it for another day to talk about DeAndre Ayton and what they should do, because I think that is one of the more interesting things about this offseason. And I know you have a lot to say about that. But I agree. What they do with DeAndre Ayton when they have to pay Mikel Bridges, all these things, I think it becomes a question mark. And I did want to touch on Monty Williams before we transition. I know mm. we spent a lot of time on this. But I, I thought, like, Monty Williams, I again, great coach. It was his first finals, all of that. He's a really, really eloquent speaker. He's very impressive when he speaks. Like, he's very inspiring, even if you're watching him on TV as a deep voice and all that. I thought you want to talk about a guy that didn't have a lot of adjustments with the Phoenix Suns. I didn't think he had an yeah. adjustment once Devin Booker's, I mean, excuse me, Drew Holiday started picking Chris Paul up uh, uh, 94 feet and disrupting their offense. I didn't think he had an answer on what they were going to do offensively. And I still don't think they had a defensive answer. They didn't have a defensive answer for the Middleton Giannis pick and roll. They didn't have a defensive answer for Giannis's touches when he gets the ball, whether it's the high post. He gets the ball at the free throw line. He brings it up at the top of the key. They didn't have an answer. And to me, like, I still think the wall would have been effective against Giannis. I mean, we saw moments when the Nets were able to establish the wall with Blake Griffin, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden, guys who aren't regarded as great defenders outside of Kevin Durant. That still affected Giannis. Like, there's still some parts of his game that are less than, and the Bucks aren't the best shooting team around him, though they shoot the ball well in the regular season. Unfortunately, even with Jay Crowder and Mikhail Bridges and DeAndre Ayton, three guys who seemingly are suited to build the wall, they never built the wall. So, yeah, they have the guys to do it. You have yeah. Jay Crowder who did it last year, you have Ayton who's just a mammoth of a person, and Bridges is also super lengthy too. They had the chance. I agree. They should have at least tried it. At the least, you know, you can't keep doing the same thing over and switch it up. Maybe they could have tried a zone. I know other teams have done that in the past. Maybe do that. And then my other thing too is I thought campaign should have had more minutes. I thought he brought a different element with how he plays and his speed and how he can take people off the dribble because he's so quick, his first step. And how he works in the post game, and he can he can shoot pretty well too. So I thought they should have gone to him a little more. I think he only had ten minutes in the last game. Um, so yeah, I'm with you. I, I thought they could they could have done a few things better. Of course, looking back at it, because um, they lost. But I liked campaign, and I, I I really do think he should have got a little more burn. I agree with you because I think their offense was just missing missing explosion in general whether it's explosion in terms of being able to score points in a hurry and explosion in terms of the pace they play. Like you can push the ball up the court, but campaign pushes the ball up the court with the intent to get a good shot early and score. Chris Paul pushes up the court to play with pace. So I think that's, there's two different things. Like Chris Paul pushes the ball up the court, but he's not looking to just, if it's a one-on-two situation, take the ball to the rack because he has a step, he'll still pull out. 
and try to initiate your offense. Campaign, if he has a two-on-two fast break or three-on-two fast break, he's going straight to the rim. So I agree with you. And he scored, I think, what, 12? He really is the reason. Scoring. I think he probably averaged like not eight or nine a game. But I don't know. It, it just felt different when he was there because he just at, – like he's so fast. Like he was taking people off the dribble drive. Um, and he just adds a different element. And I swear, every time he shoots – it, it looks like it's going in every time. I, I don't know why. I, I keep waiting for him to come back to earth. But the Bulls just, campaign? It, oh, Bulls campaign was was tough. Him and Bulls and Thunder campaign was better at dancing than playing basketball, it seemed. But uh, um, he, he turned it around, and that was one of the better redemption arcs of the uh, whole playoffs, I thought. Yeah, um, agreed, agreed. And do you have anything else to okay. add on the finals? One thing here I wanted to put up, Cam Johnson was insane. Like, I was going to say the same thing. Every time it sh- every time he shot, it looked like he – I don't remember, like, a time he actually missed. Um, and his shooting was great. He, so, he had that insane poster on P.J. Tucker. Um yeah, I mean, he he played great, and I thought he should have got some more burn, to be honest with you. Like, a forward as big as he is that can shoot well, doesn't need the ball in his hands, and he can play defense at a pretty good rate. He, he'll he be a really good role player for an extended Yeah, game. and he's J- he, he challenges Nick Batum as possibly Jeff Van Gundy's favorite player in the NBA. Cam Johnson's one of those few players when he's on the floor, Jeff Van Gundy's no longer complaining about the refs. He's waxing poetically about how much he loves Cam Johnson. I love both of them as well. I'm with Van Gundy on those, uh, both of those guys. Really good role players. Definitely. Before before we move on, we had a couple questions. My man Jamal, he said Giannis's block on Aiton was his legendary moment. Then the lob and one on CP3. Giannis proved a lot of us wrong. Great show, guys. Thank you, Jamal. Yeah, thank you, Jamal. And um, I think you're right because those both were insane. Like, th- those will be shown on, like, highlight films forever. I think especially the block just jumping off his bad knee as far as he did, tracking the ball, knowing that, Aiton's one of the best, like, dunkers, and he's that – I mean, obviously he's a mammoth of a person, and that's what he's best at. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he really just put his whole body on the line there and his livelihood because if he got dunked on, you would have never heard the end of it, um, especially if they lost. But Right. Great point. But he was willing to take that risk too. You have Mm -hmm. to appreciate that. I think him and Anthony Davis are probably the two most reckless people with their body on defense. They both throw their body. I mean, Anthony Davis probably in a basketball game, especially high magnitude basketball game, takes like five or six unnecessary hits because he moves into rotation and takes a charge that 98% of other players won't take and stuff. Giannis is the same way. Nine, nine, 900 out of 901 players give up on that play. It's a dunk to eight. And Giannis mm-hmm. finished the possession. It's one of the best blocks I've ever seen for sure. Yeah, definitely. 